During his campaign, Trump talked hard on immigration, seeking to build a massive wall on the southern United States border, which Mexico would pay for, he says, and promising to immediately terminate the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrival uh, executive order that President Obama used. DACA is an immigration policy started by the Obama administration in tw June 2012 that allows certain undocumented immigrants to the United States who entered the country as minors to receive a renewable two-year period of deferred action from deportation and eligibility for a work permit. To be eligible, immigrants must have entered the United States before their 16th birthday and before June 2007. They must currently be in school or a high school graduate, or they must be honorably discharged from the military. And they must not have been convicted of a felony, a significant misdemeanor, or otherwise pose a threat to national security. So in layman's terms, DACA, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, was started by the Obama administration. And in layman's terms, it allows undocumented immigrants who entered the country as minors by way of their parents, well, more than likely, to defer deportation for two years and to be eligible for a work permit. Now, DACA isn't some, you know, far left liberal progressive policy. In fact, there are it's a it's a pretty bipartisan bill. When you look when you read some of the bill, there are regulations and provisions that undocumented immigrants have to meet. This isn't just a free for all for undocumented immigrants. Uh, for instance, immigrants must have entered the United States before their 16th birthday, uh, must not have been convicted of felonies or significant misdemeanors, et cetera, et cetera. During his campaign, Donald Trump called DACA unconstitutional, and he promised to immediately terminate. So more hard talk on immigration. Trump has doubled down on this campaign rhetoric by appointing former Senator Jeff Sessions to the position of attorney general. Donald Trump has picked Jeff Sessions, who in the Senate proposed measures to defund DACA and also proposed a ban, proposed and supported a ban on all undocumented immigrants. Extremely extreme, as is extremely far right. Uh, and this is our this is our attorney general. But recently, Trump has softened his stance on the nation's 700,000 plus undocumented young immigrants. The New York Times reports that on Wednesday, December 7th, 2016, Donald Trump appeared to soften his stance on whether to deport more than 700,000 young people. And he said, and I quote, we're going to work something out that's going to make people happy and proud. They got brought here at a very young age. They've worked here. They've gone to school here. Some were good students. Some have wonderful jobs. And they're in Never Neverland because they don't know what's going to happen. End quote. That rhetoric is, is, is a lot softer. And it begs the question, will this divide him from his cabinet and his supporters? It seems that Trump is backing down on his tough talk on deportation that he used in his campaign. And this isn't the first time Trump has softened his stance on fundamental campaign promises. Trump has already backed down on fundamental pillars of his campaign, such as jailing his political opponent, Hillary Clinton. Now, many people would say, that was unlikely to happen anyways. But that rhetoric is what drove a lot of people out to vote for him. When you go to the Trump rally, when you look at the Trump rallies, because I don't go to them, when you look at them, when you look at journalistic reports, you see the Hillary for prison t-shirts. You know, you, you hear, you hear, you know, when you watch the news channel, certain news channels, certain news outlets, uh, certain influencers on social media, we can't forget that rhetoric of jailing Hillary Clinton that rallied so many people. Donald Trump has also backed down on his call for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Now, if you can remember in December 8th of last year, CNN reported a campaign press release saying that Donald Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims until our country's representatives, representatives can figure out, quote unquote, what's going on. He has since softened his tone on that. Trump has also backed down on his build a wall rhetoric. If you can remember, 
perhaps the most popular pillar of his campaign of his campaign was building a wall on the United States southern border basically to block Mexico from California, Texas, Arizona, etc. He has since backed far away from that instead of building a huge massive wall that Mexico is going to pay for, he has recently suggested on extending a fence that is currently already there. And this is a policy that Hillary Clinton also supported. So he, he's moved from far right. Now he's, 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 coming, he's coming to the middle. Perhaps the most important piece of his campaign and of the conservative Republican platform, Obamacare. For years, ever since the Sebelius court decision, Republicans have been trying to repeal Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act. Donald Trump's campaign and darn near every Republican's campaign was centered around repealing Obamacare. Recently, Donald Trump appears to have appears to be reneging on that as well, calling for reforms rather than a total repeal of Obamacare. He's also went as far to call certain provisions worthy of remaining saying he would look to retain provisions of Obamacare that allow young adults to be insured on their parents' policies up to a certain age and keeping certain provisions such as prohibiting health insurers from denying patients of coverage based on pre-existing conditions. Now, these aren't just small promises that he made during the campaign that he's you know changing his views on. These are essentially the pillars of his campaign, the most fundamental facets of his campaign, and he's backed away from many of them. Obamacare, the wall on the southern border, banning Muslim immigration. Can he afford to break another promise to his voter base? Or does his voter base even care? I think if this were any other presidential candidate, and, you know, obviously, presidential candidates lie. You know, they say one thing during campaign, then when they get into office, it's, it's different. But it's rare that you see a politician renege on several of their most important campaign promises. Not just one or two. We're talking three, four, or five of them. Now, my personal thoughts on this immigration issue. Personally, I'm not for borders. This is a this world was born borderless. And it will end borderless. But in the Euro imperialist capitalist system that we live in, where borders are drawn to allocate resources and for political purposes, we live in a in a, in a time and in a and in the world with borders. So as of right now, we need secure borders. We need to minimize the number of undocumented immigrants coming into the country while simultaneously fixing and streamlining the current stagnant immigration system. But we also have hundreds of thousands to millions of people here without documents. They're from another country, but by all means, they're American. Many were born here since they can, many have been here since they can remember They've paid tax, you know, they've paid certain taxes, maybe not income tax, maybe not state tax, due to due to how the corporations are using them for cheap labor and undocumented labor, but they've paid, they've contributed to society, to the economy, uh, sales tax, and so on and so forth. They've gained skills at American schools. They've grown up here. Culturally, by all means, they are American. And we owe it to them not to mass deport them, their friends, and their family. But it's imperative also to get illegal immigration under control. The lack of proper taxing, income tax, sales tax, taxes that go towards infrastructure, hospitals, and so on and so forth, harms our economy. And it harms the people who are paying those taxes. But so does the exploitation by corporation who love this stagnation in immigration reform because it gives them a large pool of extremely cheap 
labor, they can, you know, and these people, they aren't, they can't join a union. And when I say these people, I don't mean these people. I mean undocumented immigrants. Uh, so I apologize for that. But uh, undocumented immigrants, let's stop using pronouns. <laughs> undocumented immigrants, they can't join the union. They, they aren't subject to the minimum wage. The corporations love having that pool of cheap labor because what does cheap labor mean? More profits. So it's a multifaceted issue. Corporations are taking advantage of this illegal immigration problem and they're skirting the United States worker. They're skirting the American worker. We're not going to pay you minimum wage. You can only work seven, eight hours a day. We have to give you health and all these other coverages with, you know, which American workers have worked for. They fought for these rights over centuries. We're not going to give you those. You're an undocumented immigrant. You have no papers. We're going to pay you what we pay you. And you're going to work how you work. And if not, then we also have contact to authorities to get you deployed. It's, it's it, de deported. It's such an exploitative system <laughs> that we're in. And it's imperative to get illegal immigration under control for those reasons. Now, I think now, if you watch this channel, you know I'm a solutions guy. I don't like just talking about the, to, about, about the problems. I like getting a solution in there also. I think that identifying undocumented immigrants, the majority who are responsible and levying a reasonable fine or a lot, or providing a program to where they can pay over time for their illegal entry is a more effective solution from a human rights standpoint and financially than creating a deportation force and trying to deport millions of people across this huge country. That alternative doesn't make sense. And we have this system where corporations are taking advantage of workers. We have this situation of undocumented workers. We have this situation where undocumented workers, ha having such a large volume of them, um, it's weighing on our infrastructure. It's weighing on our institutions because it, they're not accounted for. They're not accounted uh, in many tax instances. They're not accounted in terms of the census. So ec economically, it creates a mess. But our political inability to prevent this problem from, from happening should not result in politically irresponsible, knee-jerk immigration policy reactions, such as creating a mass deportation force and trying, to, and trying to deport millions of people. That just doesn't make sense. And I think Donald Trump is beginning to understand this as he softens his rhetoric on deporting thousands of young immigrants.